Good evening, and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection. Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, begins in your order of worship We're on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Let us pray. O God, we thank you for the glorious company of the apostles, and especially on this day for Simon and Jude. And we pray that as they were faithful and zealous in their mission, so we may with ardent devotion make known the love and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses recited the words of this song. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. Let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop like rain, my speech condense like the dew, like gentle rain on grass, like showers on new growth. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God without deceit, just and upright his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 119. Let's read it in unison. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness remains from one generation to another. You establish the earth, and it abides. By your decree, these continue to this day. For all things are your servants. If my delight had not been in your law, I should have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your commandments, because by them you give me life. I am yours. Oh, that you would save me, for I study your commandments. Though the wicked lie in wait for me to destroy me, I will apply my mind to your decrees. I see that all things come to an end, but your commandment has no bounds. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, the world will love you as its own. Because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the world that, word that I said to you, servants are not greater than their master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But they will not do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sinned, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not have sinned. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. It was to fulfill the word that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth, who comes from the father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think most of us understand on an intuitive level that names are important. For places, they carry the markers of history, of people groups, of hopes and dreams, of ideals, Legacies brought from other places or a whole host of other pieces of the past. For both people and places, names mean more than just, hey you, or over there. 
either by the meanings attached to the actual word or to the people or place they belong to. Names sometimes carry meaning before they're even given, particularly for people when we're named for members of our family or in honor of someone. When we share a name with someone else, it can be a wonderful thing. It also can make things difficult, as is the case with the apostles we celebrate today. Today we celebrate Simon and Jude, but before we get going, we have to clarify exactly who we're talking about. Because of the apostles, uh, it's frankly a little confusing. Simon should not be confused with the other vocal disciple, also named Simon, who is more well known by his nickname, Peter. Tonight, Simon is identified in Matthew and Mark as a Canaanite, and as Simon the Zealot in Luke and Acts of the Apostles. To get at Jude, well, that's even more complicated. The Gospels of Luke and John and the Acts of the Apostles all refer to a disciple with the Greek variant of the name Judah. Luke adds the familial detail, son of James, yet Mark and Matthew make no such mention. They do include an apostle named Thaddeus. Tradition holds that these two mismatched disciples are the same person, and that using Thaddeus was a way to clearly distinguish between tonight's disciple and from another disciple who also has a name based on the Greek variant of the name Judah, transformed uniformly in all of the Gospels as Judas Iscariot. The Gospel of John was so focused on making sure that tonight's apostle was not mistaken for the man to betray Jesus, he is referred to as Judas, not Iscariot. <laughs> to further separate these two, Judas Thaddeus is often simply called Jude, who may or may not have penned the epistle of Jude, one of the shortest books of the Bible at only 25 verses. This pair of apostles share a feast day a bit like bunk beds, not because of their shared confusion over names, but as it was held that they were both martyred together on the same day in Beirut in the year of 65. While there isn't much on either of these apostles in scripture, tradition does give us a lot of details, some of which seem a little random, like the fact that Jude was a vegetarian. There are various traditions about Jude's family origins, one say that he was born to a Jewish family living in far-flung pagan Caesarea Philippi, which gives an interesting twist to Jesus' journey there. Another tradition suggests that he was Jesus' cousin, and a related tradition to that suggests that he was the bridegroom at Cana, where Jesus' first miracle took place according to John's Gospel. Tradition also holds that Jude went to Samaria, Syria, Mesopotamia, and Libya after Jesus' ascension where Simon may or may not have accompanied him. He may also have gone to Edessa, or that may have been a different Thaddeus as one of the 70, just to add to more confusion about names. Tradition carries something else to us about Jude. In the earliest days of the church, the faithful began treating those who we now call saints for help with things that they might have experience with or have an interest in, which is now how we come with the notion of patron saints. Now, as you probably know, Jude is the patron saint of lost causes. That wasn't originally the case. But those who began to petition the saints were so worried about that name thing, Jude was simply left out for fear of being confused with Judas Iscariot. Jude Thaddeus found himself so ignored in the pantheon of saints that he was happy to help with absolutely anyone willing to seek his aid, including interceding for those who were desperate or in dire circumstances. As for Simon, well, we know even less, perhaps the most obscure of all the disciples. Called Simon the Zealot in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, likely to distinguish him from Simon Peter, many scholars believe that this is also another name problem, and this time one about a place, a, a mistranslation. Rather than being having a zeal or belonging to the Jewish group known as the Zealots, Simon likely was from a town in Cana called Zelotes, which, if you look at it, is spelled very similar to Zealot. While Simon also shares the name with one of Jesus' brothers, according to the Gospel of Mark, this disciple seems to be key for being identified as a member of Jesus' family, by and large, although some traditions suggest that he may have been Jude's brother, making him one of Jesus' cousins. In a non-canonical Gospel, a young boy named Simon is bitten by a snake and healed by another young boy, whose half name happens to be Jesus who tells him he will one day become a disciple. Simon is believed to have journeyed to Egypt and may have joined Jude in Persia, along with a lot of other places. He may have also been the second bishop of Jerusalem, following James of Jerusalem, and at that time, while he was in office, may have faced martyrdom. 
although another tradition claims that Simon wasn't martyred at all, but died peacefully in his sleep. Perhaps because of this lack of evidence, Simon has become a popular candidate for fictional accountings of the first century and beyond. He features in the musical Jesus Christ Superstar. He also appears as a witness for the defense of Judas in the play The Last Days of Judas Iscariot, and also features in a poem by Ezra Pound. What strikes me perhaps more than anything as I have visited with these two apostles is the trouble taken in describing them seems to be focused on who they aren't. Their identities seem to center not on what they did or said, but rather on making sure they are distinguished from the parties who share their names. Judas, Jude, not Judas Iscariot, and Simon, not Simon Peter. The first, of course, for his infamy, and the second for his place among the disciples on the rock which the church will be built, despite doubt and constant questions. On one hand, that feels a little disheartening, as someone who shares a name with another Episcopalian, one with published credits and authorship to her name, I know a little bit what it's like to be defined as the other Rochelle Thompson. <laughs> but on the other hand, there's also something about this pair who are among the twelve and yet aren't foremost in mention on either side of the scale. In my time in theater, there was a saying among sound folks that you knew you had done your job when no one noticed what you had done. The work then called attention to itself. And I wonder if it isn't true for these apostles as well. While they didn't have an epiphany moment recognizing Jesus as the Messiah as Peter does, neither are they the pair arguing about who is first among the apostles. And while certainly they flee the Garden of Gethsemane with the rest at Jesus' arrest, neither do they betray or deny their rabbi. They simply go about the business of following Jesus. And then, after Jesus' resurrection and ascension, carry the good news, as they have been instructed to do. As no one noticed, they did their job. As we consider the saints for examples of following Christ, I find something pretty compelling in the quiet, the less miraculous, possibly attainable example of the obscure. Turning to your order of worship, or page 358, let us stand together and reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, but God was not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found in your order of worship, or on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. 
Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Continuing in your bulletin or turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. Peace, my friends, peace. peace. Hey y'all, welcome. Please be seated. It's great to see you all here this evening, and thanks to those of you who are joining us online or later. Grateful that you are taking the time to pray with us. Also, thanks to everybody who came out or supported uh, the Windy Van Houten Garden Opry fundraiser. Uh, it was a very good time. I uh, hope that if you didn't try and come, that you will try to be there next year as well. It was a really good time. Uh, also, uh, coming up in the life of the larger church, the ECW Fall Conference, is uh, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after November 4th and 5th for the Women of the Church. The last day to register for that, for either one or both days, is this coming Sunday the 30th. So if that's an activity you are interested in taking part in, please make sure you get signed up for that. There is a, um, a, a huge itinerary, but it is a good chance to gather, and the Saturday includes um, some tours of some local churches you probably have not seen before. Uh, coming up in our life of resurrection, on uh, November 13th, we're going to have a parish life activity, a cookout, and uh, share sides and chili uh, on that on the evening of Sunday, November 13th, so stay with date for that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to come. Lift them up to the 
unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praises. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, to the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations, and promised to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant to shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in them. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! The gifts of God, the people of God.
post communion prayer can be found in your order of worship on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, remember, God made you, God sees you, God knows you, and God loves you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.